now I create uh, programs and uh, after doing recitals I realized that it has to be something mine, what I really, how I feel. And then I thought, why I don't, why I can't do as I feel? And I never feel that I come out and I wait for applause and then I start my recital. I like to come suddenly, do sudden things which people are not, but they always know it, she will make something special for us. And that's how I feel because people for recital, for recital they come to see me. The opera business, you know, with stage staging sometimes you do never what you like and what you feel. And when you have experience and you see it will be not good. And you try to say that to director. Directors, they, they, they take it personally and I understand it. They don't want to trust you. So I have very few people who, who can trust me, but when where they don't listen, unfortunately I'm always right. And it's never success, because if artist is not feeling 100% secure on stage, it's never success. Well, you can vocalize beautifully, but this is not me. I'm, I'm saying about fantastic things, and we're not, we're not recording this. We recorded? Yes. Ah, very good. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> and I said that he's... Ah, very nice. Um, yesterday was, I, I heard that was very, very beautiful recital, and uh, it... Uh, this recital was about uh, some, some foundation, yeah? Well, the building is, uh, they, they, it's called uh, Uola Foundation, but uh, they do have these VIP concerts uh, a few times in a year, and um, the maximum seats is 100 people there. Um, officially 90, and I thought, like, it's strange, I never, never sang in such a, such a place, it was too small, you know? Yeah, for your voice, for example. It's, uh, yeah, small. yesterday how also I, how I, you felt felt? I, I need to pull it down, I need to, I need to cover myself, but it's a bad idea because as soon as you, you are not fully who you are, it's not real. And uh, so I decided yesterday be 100% as always, and I think this killed a lot of people um, um, emotionally because they said it was just like we, we were, like, so it was just also too close, you know. Everybody could see me so close. I didn't know what to expect, but I was following my intuition, uh, my instincts, and uh, my intuition says, just, just do that. And also it was good to go through the program, which we will bring to Budapest, Hungarian state opera, uh, with my pianist. And also we are going to Sao São, São Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Uh, so we have a busy autumn. And um, it was a good chance to also to go through the program and also create something special. Not, not typical, not usual recital when, you know, everything is just But the chamber so music is not, not for your voice? Probably. No, I don't think the chamber music is for my voice. Uh, it's for my voice, it's not for my uh, uh, personality. I was fighting many years with my emotions and I don't think it's a good idea uh, to cut it because many times I was cutting emotions and uh, I basically have difficulties to, to sing when I don't have full my body and full out my emotions when it comes out. Of course I have to control as always we singers we must control the um, singing and technique but uh, in general if when I hear and I heard that many times just like come down and, and cover your emotions I, I, I and I tried and I lost a lot. I lost a lot in terms of just also uh, in terms of feeling right on stage myself. And I think when you're not yourself, you're lying. You're not, you're not, you, you just do something what somebody advised you or somebody tells you to do and, and this is not you. And we, don't, we can not be great for everybody. So we must find our um, public who really takes you as you are and likes that, you know? I, I, I don't know um, a singers, a, a big names, and a big artist that, that everybody would like them. And that's absolutely fine. And uh, I think it really, it, it also disturbs us a lot because we always think what critics will say, and that's really horrible. And we never, never, we must remember and we must understand that this is subjective opinion. If somebody wants one, or, or two people or three people, they write something, but audience is, uh, you know, gives you a reception as obvious. That's it. We are not working for critics.
It's nice when, when they like. It's nice when they like. The same with the conductors. If they don't trust you, they want to, they try to put you in the box. You know, they want you to see them, you know, catch me. It's impossible. You, of course, we just need to, sometimes we are too free. So you need to control singers, if we speak about conductors, without controlling them. And this is talent. This, uh, when we call uh, maestro, this is the difference in between maestro and conductors. There's a lot of conductors and on, only few maestro. There's a lot of singers, only few artists. Very important to understand that at the, at the end of the, any story, a singer is the one who is facing audience. So if everybody would remember that, would be would be nice because we have to deal with everything. Singers have to deal with everything. We are facing the audience, you know, and uh, all eyes is on us. And um, it's very important to to feel safe and, and comfortable. It's we we don't have to fight. The stage is not area for fighting, of course. It's um, we have to make a music, but as I said, th there has to be trust and and respect from both sides. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, we are very glad that you are coming back to Vilnius. Thank you. Uh, me, too. After, me too, I'm after, very happy. After uh, such a years, uh, uh, with, not a, with not a concert, with a, now with a production. Yes. Uh, and uh, what does it mean for you? A lot. A lot of things. First of all, um, this will be my first production with uh, Maestro Sesto Quattrini. It was surprising also for me that he invited me. Uh, he asked me for Aida, but it, it was interesting because uh, at that time I, 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 th I was thinking that I should sing some Verdi. I should move a little bit. I should try because I am, I'm always doing Puccini, 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 and also Rusalka. And uh, I, I thought it's, it, it was a great idea, you know, and I, I thought in, in Lithuania, which is close to my home, I must say that, uh, it was special to come back for Aida because I, I did the role many years ago in the Riga National Opera. And uh, it felt, well, Aida is difficult, but it was not that difficult as other roles I, I did also by that time. And I think Verdi is always about singing and, and technique. So you can check yourself um, how good you are. And uh, I still have some curiosity of course uh, you, you you should never stop with your with your um, learning the technique and singing and i think verdi is really something which can put you in the process learning process um, making yourself better it's a special case for me i'm i'm worried positively uh, also because uh, i'm not big fan of make, doing a productions now because it takes me a lot of time being away from home but we are quite close, so I always can, can take a car and uh, come back here and see my daughter. So I'm happy about that. And uh, about Aida, yeah, you, when you were in, in Vilnius in 2016, in one interview to our magazine Bravissimo for our yes. National Opera House uh, magazine, you told, yes, I think now is the time for me to return to Aida. <gasps> Yes, yeah, you said that, that. already and in 16. In the summer of the same year, you sang Aida, Violetta Urmana in the yes, United sang it, States. But it was, not, uh, it was not full. Ah, it was not full. I don't think. Uh, we didn't do a full. Uh, it was concertante. We did only first or second act. And after that, you never sang Aida? No. And now it's like... Uh, yes, th that's why I'm saying it's very special. It's very special. Very special you know, mm -hmm. moment for me coming. What do you think is very special for Aida character? Oh. Well, as always, uh, love. <laughs> She's a loving person. Every opera has these issues, I would say. <laughs> and of course, dying at the end. But also her love to, to her um, country, to the people, to you know her pain being not at home and all this drama with father of course there's a lot of pain and uh, in this story but yes it's somehow also you know because of this uh, a horrible war we are facing now all world basically um, everything what what speaks uh, you know about home about your land homeland 
it's somehow so special now. I've never been so often at home as I am now. Well, from COVID started everything, of course. But now especially you, you start to understand because of this um, horrible uh, war, uh, you understand how we, how is important, how blessed we are that you know we can live this calm, at least in, in you know in our countries for now, at least for now. And you never know what will be tomorrow. And this, I think, for Aida now makes sense as well, more sense for me to sing this role. Not only love, not not only suffer about about your lover. Are you think that she's a strong woman like like you are? Oh. I think that all opera characters, what we have operas about, especially the title roles, they must be strong, no? Otherwise we would not have these operas. So composers, composers had something in their heads, <laughs> you know, writing the, these uh, certain stories. They wrote for she somebody. She must be very for... strong, yeah, mm -hmm. Aida. And I think she, she is very beautiful as a woman and she's very pure. And she's very strong. Do your stage partners uh, have an influence on your decisions to take part in, in one or in another productions? There were a few colleagues whom I would trust if they would tell me, you know, let's do so. I believe you, you are great in that. Um, well, I was lucky with tenors. Of course, the biggest happiness in my life is Jonas Kaufmann. And um, it was the best time in my life. We, we worked very fast together and uh, all his uh, suggestions was really great. And, uh, and I think it was really best. But uh, if, be honest, um, I've, I've been really lucky with tenors. Joseph Kalea, we had such a great time. Also, once I worked with uh, Roland Viazon uh, in Vienna. We did uh, La Bohème. I will never forget this. The, the, this is probably was one of the few times in my in my life being on stage that I I remember this feeling going to the opera without this nervosity, but with uh, something like oh, I want it. I cannot wait to be on stage. So Rolando has something so strong and special artistically. And I, I felt like a child in his hands. I don't know, this feeling I never had. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly remember this. It was at the very beginning of my career. This performance was magic, magic. And um, very similar experience with Jonas. Oh, we had it. Charisma, I think, stage charisma together, and uh, but also I had a lot of fun with uh, Josef Kalea, uh, with um, oh crazy Vittorio Grigolo, my crazy friend. <laughs> but I don't know, they were all all big names. They were so nice to me. They were very friendly. Never had any problems with these big guys, you know. Mm -hmm. and they they supposed to be difficult and I heard a lot of things you know but never with me never I've been lucky with that I think maybe it's something about myself as well because I'm very open I'm very open but I can't be bad if I feel that somebody is bad to me it was a very few times in my life that I needed to be rude me and rude on stage it's very rare but it's never without the reason Never. And also for me it's important that we are a team and we are friends on stage. You know, if somebody doing things like behind the bag or just the aggressivity. Often intrigues no, no, I don't know. I, I had few. No, I, I cannot say that I, I had bad experience. But, and, it, it, and it was shocking. But also the shows was bad. It's affecting me. And I think it's... Um, this kind of things is this is uh, in purpose. It's when somebody wants to be a leader on stage, and when when men you know doing this with the women, it's so weak. But when they are aggressive, oh, 
it's it's affecting me. I, I cannot be even... Some people, they're getting even more strong because then they start to fight on stage. I cannot fight on stage because for me this is... It has to be team. We must be friendly, we must be family. So I, I, I have few very personal bad experiences. What is the maximum workload that you allow yourself to avoid burnout or health problems? Is there an optimal number of performances or per month or per year? I've, I've never... I've, I was very strong always. I, I could sing every day, rehearse every day. I had a lot of performances. I did HD, like at the Metropolitan, the schedule was crazy. But it's also, it killed me in general, this schedule. But now we are speaking about, about that. I'm so thankful to that time. Again, I, I, I don't remember anything bad. It was a lot of bad things there, what happened to me. But it was amazing time and uh, I got this, uh, the best experience, you know, being at the Metropolitan with all these uh, performances and HD transmissions. And uh, as my passion is a movie, these cameras, you know, this amazing experience, what I got at the Metropolitan. And I'm very thankful to that time. And I think it was one of the most beautiful time in my life. And all big, big houses like Covent Garden, Metropolitan, Munich, oh, Rusalka, what I did there, and, and other things. It's, it's a magic. And now your home is Latvia? Good understanding? Yes, Good understanding? yes. Uh, Which place you can call your home? Jurmala. Jurmala. Jurmala, the place where we're filming. Yeah, and, and one last question from your fans. Uh, you, you, you have cancelled your Carmen debut in Austria yes. earlier this year. Yep. And uh, what were the reasons behind this decision? And will the opera world ever hear you, Carmen? Again? <laughs> oh gosh. You know, it's a sad story. Uh, it started strange because I got this offer from uh, Daniel Serafin, who is uh, also a um, Intendant of San, San Margaret, and um, he he went to see my uh, Tosca with Jonas Kaufmann in in a summer festival, very beautiful summer festival uh, in Graz, in Austria, and uh, he he told me like about two things. He says, "Do Carmen, please." He asked me, "Can you do, do Carmen?" I was like, "What?" Why Carmen? No. <laughs> so my reaction was, no, it's crazy. No, 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 no. It took him uh, one year. He was texting me and messaging me and, uh, and really convincing me to do that. And I spoke to my uh, voice teacher, um, coach. Uh, so, uh, and she's mezzo-soprano. And she says, yes, you can do that because you have very good low notes. And then I cancelled beautiful production, production like Concertante of Otello, because I wanted to sing also finally Desdemona. And they were supposed to be in Boston with Boston Symphony Orchestra, no, in Tanglewood Summer Festival. And, uh, I, and I said, because of this hotel, I said, I cannot do that because it's, you know, it's, it's the same period. And we tried, we tried, but that was not working. But then somehow my manager says, look, you know, it's only one Otello or so many Carmen's. And I, I quit it. I said, OK. I, and it was my biggest mistake. It was another time when I was not listening to my intuition. My intuition says, it's not now, it's not time. This is a good role at the very end of your career. It's a good role when when you really did already everything you wanted. And uh, my intuition was right, but I trusted people and basically they decided for me. I will never do that again. And uh, when I start to prepare the role, when I start to sing it, I felt difficulties right away. 
I felt I'm too heavy. And my teacher was telling me, you have to sing it with your voice. And even when I sang it with my voice, I felt strange. And as, as more I sang, and I, I, th I thought I have to sing also a soprano repertoire, you know. So I started to sing soprano just also at home and uh, just to, you know, arias. And I started to feel difficult with the arias where I always felt very comfortable. And I, I really, I got very afraid. I understood. Then my intuition says, if you will focus on Carmen, after Carmen you do Carmen or maybe nothing. And then also I, I start to feel sick with my uh, body. I lost power and I just felt very, uh, very bad. And I, I start to, to lose the ability in general to sing. And then depression came and I thought, no, I, I cannot do that. I just could not do that artistically. And it was very sad. It was a very painful decision because I also, I heard Daniel so much and I know it, I know it. Uh, because he had so many hope and uh, he trusted me, you know. And uh, we never spoke after that, I, I sent him a message. I know he never, he will never want to speak to, to me again. But this is happening. I needed to save myself. Because I did a uh, few times things uh, to step over myself because I was afraid to hurt other people. And I did very bad to my body. I did very bad decision to myself. So I will never do this again. And this time was I needed to, to decide. And uh, I think, and when I cancelled, I felt so good. And that was the first sign. So the, the health problems, uh, I, was, I was getting sick with my throat, you know, all the time. Everything finished, everything stopped. And I felt very good right away. So it's... Um, Sometimes we have to make a difficult decision, but we have to listen to ourselves always. And only, only your intuition can, say, can tell you. But my mistake was that I, I thought, okay, maybe I'm not right. So we cannot think we are not right, because how God can speak to us? The intuition, this is the gate. If your heart say, it's not a good idea, this is not a good idea. But I... I I'm sorry, I uh, cancelled at the last moment, but I, I thought it's better I cancel before we start even the rehearsals than I cancel during the rehearsals before the shows, you know. So I knew that they have a good chance to find somebody else. So I did it for, for best. Um, I, I needed to do it quicker, of course, but I gave it chance till the last moment. I just felt unhappy, you know, what is strange. Also, I have to be honest, I didn't feel the role, musically. It's very strange. I didn't understand the character. I didn't feel the character. I'm not Carmen. I didn't find myself. Hello, daughter. <laughs> Don't be shy. This is your world. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is, this is the main reason, but it, it would be, and I, basically I say this honestly, that I, it's not just my piece of cake, but be, if, if I have to say deeply, I don't understand the women. She's not me. And for me it's very important to find a way that I can, I, that I feel sorry for the character. I feel sorry even for Katerina Ismailova of sense what I will do soon. I feel sorry for her because she was so much, she was in love so insanely. She could kill everybody for this Sergei. This is the passion. This is the real love. When you cannot control your emotions, you can die for the person. So I feel sorry for her. But for Carmen, I don't feel sorry. I don't, I don't feel sorry for Carmen. And for Aida? Yes, of course. For everybody. For Turando. She's not dying, unfortunately, then. She should die. And I would not feel sorry for her. So this is the role, I don't know, what had to happen that I would sing Turandot. 
I don't know what should happen to, to me in my brain that I would think Turandot. <laughs> because for me the rose goes only together with my emotions. And I don't feel these women. No Carmen, no Turandot. Sorry. But we are very happy that you feel Aida <laughs> and you will come to Vilnius. I hope I will feel Aida. <laughs> And thank you, Christina, yeah, 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 for your time today. Thank and, you. Uh, I didn't say anything to my fans. I don't know, do I have fans in, in Lithuania? Of you course, think? of course. A really? lot of fans. You can, you can tell yeah, something of, yes, for your fans. Yes, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to say... Uh, directly um, to camera. Oh, really? Can. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I just wanted to say that I cannot wait to be on stage and um, share this feelings and this role and this production with all of you. Um, I love you already um, and I hope that I know I will have a good audience and I really cannot wait to to work with the, with your great stage director um, and um, I hope you you will enjoy it and uh, yeah so we, we will need your support and uh, cannot wait. I cannot wait. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it was. Wonderful.